Welcome to the gold project today. I am going to be doing a different type of video for y'all I will be honest if you watched my video. I think it was Yesterday if you watched my video over an afternoon in my life, you probably noticed the mound of laundry in my laundry room and my nose is itching I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if there's something blooming, but my nose has itched so bad this week but as i was filming yesterday or last week for yesterday's video i'm like you know what i have seen some people do what they call a laundro chat where they sit down and they chit chat with you guys answer questions about a topic maybe a q a while they're folding laundry so i thought let's do that so i asked you guys on social media on instagram and facebook to give me some questions that you would like me to answer if you are not following me on instagram or facebook that link is in the description below and i would love to have you in both of those communities so i've got my phone here and y'all this is just one bucket of i want to say like four things of laundry so I've got plenty of laundry to do while I answer your questions. And you might see my kids popping in and out to take their laundry to their bedroom. So we are gonna start with the questions, I guess on Facebook, because normally I start with Instagram. So I'm gonna open up my Facebook and I'm just gonna go through here and answer the questions that you guys have asked. I have not looked at the questions at all. So these are gonna be like, I mean, you're gonna get my honest opinion or answer or anything like that. So let's go through here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I think some of these have several questions in one. So it says, since tornadoes can be common where you live, how do you deal with all of the watches and warnings? I know that warnings mean one has been spotted. Do you have a basement to go to? Have you ever seen a tornado? I'm a weather buff, but also terrified of those things. I will tell you that my hometown experienced a tornado back, I think it was April 2nd of 2006. And at that time I was living in Memphis. So I was not there, but my parents were, my husband's mom was, all of our families were, many houses were torn up. A lot of rebuilding had to be done. And the school where I graduated high school was completely demolished. It had to be torn down completely and rebuilt. So I kind of take them seriously or more serious than I did prior to 2006. So right now, um, I do not have a basement in my home but we do have a safe place that we go to and we've only had to go to the safe place once this year and once last year and normally i'll post some kind of picture to show you what we're doing the animals and it's our kids bathroom so that is the one room in the house that has no windows and um, it's not an exterior wall so we all go in there animals included bella and armani will go in the bathroom we usually take in their um shoes we make sure we have our shoes on um any type of important documents they all go in there just because you guys you never know like you can sit here and say oh well that's never gonna happen to me but when it hit my hometown in 2006 it was actually a sunny day and all of a sudden it was like bam and it came through so we do have a safe spot at the house that we do go to and we do take them seriously and if it's a watch we don't but if it is a warning if our tornado siren does go off we do go to our safe spot okay second question i know you're an avid reader do you keep a reading journal or list of some sort like good reads or something like that I used to keep a little notebook that I wrote them all in, but I was not keeping up with that. 
So what I do now is I will actually put the link in the description below. I have a page on my blog that says book diary. So every time I read a book, I will put it on that page. It goes all the way back to 2015. So it has all of my books and I think I've actually ranked them now. Um, every year that I do a top three books, I will put those, the first three on each year. So you will also be able to find what book I'm currently reading on my sidebar on the right towards the bottom. It says what I'm reading and then it will have a picture and an actual link if you want to click on the link and um, purchase the book for yourself. So yes, that is the way that I keep up with it because I have learned that that's, the, that's actually something that I'm going to do. I don't think I would be able to keep up with the Goodreads thing because don't you have to put like a like your opinion and all that kind of stuff. I just don't think I would be able to keep up with that. I didn't even keep up with the notebook. Like I was doing really good for like the first two years and I thought, no, I, I just can't keep up with this. So I now just keep pictures on my blog on its own page. Next is, what's your favorite lipstick or lip product and favorite color? Hmm, I do not wear lip products normally. I just, I, y'all, I don't know. I've tried, I don't know how many different brands of lip product, colors, and I just don't think any of them look good on me. That is why you never see me with any type of lip stuff on. I just feel like when I wear lipstick or something that's bright, it does not look like me. I, I don't feel like myself. So the one that I do wear, if you see me wearing anything, is probably the um, Tarte, the Graveyard Girls Collection in Texas Toast. That is the basically the only colored lip product I have, and it's a mauve type of color. It's very neutral. It's not very loud and overpowering at all. Other than that, I wear chapstick. That's just what I feel comfortable with. I just, it's not gonna get on my teeth. So that's usually what I wear is chapstick. Um, what advice do you have for beginning vloggers and YouTubers and tips? Oh, the biggest one is if you were starting on YouTube, you have to love what you're doing because I will tell you like my students, my students have found my channel and they want to talk to me about it in class and all that kind of stuff. And how did you get all of those followers? And how do you, how do I get all of that? And I'm like, it is hard work. It is very, very hard work. You have to love it. You can't just, and you all, I can go back and watch my beginning videos and like cringe a little bit on the inside because I could tell how uncomfortable I was on camera. And I'm more comfortable now and I'm more comfortable carrying my camera with me and it just takes a while to get used to it. So one, you need to really love it. Two, make sure that you're doing something or you're sharing something on your channel that you truly love. Like everything I share on here, I absolutely love to share those type of things. If I didn't, I would not make the videos. So, you know, if you are not somebody that is a beauty expert or a makeup guru, you probably don't want to make your channel devoted to makeup and get ready with me type of videos. You need to be you in front of a camera. And that is going to be very hard at the beginning. I have said this I don't know how many times. When I started my YouTube channel, I was doing my introduction video and I sat there y'all literally for like an hour and could not get, hey, this is Kristen and welcome to the Gold Project. I could not get that out. I literally had to go get my husband from another room and say, stand behind this camera, stare at me and make me say it. Because I just, I felt odd because it is very odd in the beginning because like right now y'all are watching this but when i'm filming this i'm talking to nobody so it is very hard in the beginning because you're basically talking to yourself so you have to become more comfortable talking to yourself i guess so just make the videos and it, it becomes more natural and easier to get in front of the camera and to be yourself the more times that you do it. So, those would probably be my tips. And also, one thing, 
another thing and then I'll move on to another question is it takes a lot to get it's not it does not come easy or for me it is not came easy I love it I love editing I love you know doing my editorial calendar I love filming the videos all of that but even with all of that it even it's hard to get subscribers and keep subscribers and keep communication and all that it is actually a job like I have said this I spend as much time on my content and my channel and my Instagram and my Facebook as I do teaching so if you do not love it do not do it because it is a lot of work a lot of work that you're probably not going to see the benefits from in the very beginning you just have to be consistent that's another thing that I will say you have to be consistent like for me I try to make sure that I post on uh, post every week because you guys and this is me too when I have followed a youtuber and they'll like sporadically post things I'm like they must not be devoted to their channel I mean they just randomly post stuff and then they go weeks without posting anything they're not on their social media so to me it looks like they're not invested in their channel so I try to be consistent I like to post on Instagram at least three times a day if I don't post three times it's because I don't have anything to post of interest or I have uh, I don't really have or I just ran out of time because with my daughter's cheer schedule, my teaching schedule, my husband's football schedule, and my son's Taekwondo schedule, sometimes I just don't get time to post as much as I want to on those places. So those, but other than that, consistency. So to summarize, because I know I've been all over the place, one, do it because you love it. Find something, your niche, you've got to figure out what you want to share and make sure that you're passionate about what you share because everybody's going to see that. Um, make sure, just film yourself. It's not going to be comfortable in the beginning, but you will gradually get the hang of it. Four, be consistent. So those are probably the four things that are really, 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 you know, the main four things. Be consistent. Be consistent. So I have done research recently, and if you notice, because I have hit a wall on my channel. So I've gotten to where it's kind of like this with subscribers, like I haven't been moving anywhere. So you will notice that I have gone in and I'm trying to change my SEO settings. So I've done a bunch of research, watched videos, I've purchased a book. So I'm going in and I'm changing my thumbnails and I'm changing my tags and my keywords and all of that to see if it can help because some of my SEO scores were like zero out of a hundred. So it does take lots of time, it does take research. So make sure that you do love it. Okay, I think I've spent way too long on that one question. Okay, the next one is, not sure if you mentioned in a video, but what is your current read and do you know what your next book will be? Um, yes, I do. And if you will let me pause for one second, I will actually go get both of the books so you can see what they look like. So I am back and I've gone through one bucket already. So now I have my second bucket and I'm going to start folding it. But before I do that, I want to share the books. My current book, I am ashamed to say, is the same one that I shared recently. I'm not even going to say recently. Probably about two months ago on my Instagram and Facebook. And you guys, with the end of the school year and trying to start my YouTube schedule this summer, I have not picked up the book yet. So I was doing so good on reading and then the end of the year hit and I've not had time to sit down and read. So I'm hoping to do that in the next week or two. So what I will be reading is When We Were Worthy. This is what I'm going to read next. And I'm really excited about it because the reviews were really good and the author actually, Miss Mary Beth, actually sent this book to me. So I'm excited to read that and give her my feedback. And then after that book, I have purchased Black Like Me by John Howard Griffin. And I this is a true story. And I heard it's an, it is an amazing book. And you guys, I wanted to read this because I want to get... Sometimes I feel like I don't understand other people's culture and all of that. Or I feel like I could do a little bit of a better job understanding others. 
So I read um, The Hate You Give, and I really liked that. And I read um, The Underground Railroad. So I'm going to read this one next. And it came very highly recommended. And I want to say that I don't know if I was watching a video on the Underground Railroad where somebody was talking about it or the hate you give, but I want to say I read in the comments of a YouTube video where they recommended this book and that's why I purchased it. So I'm really excited to start this book after the When We Were Worthy. So those are my next two reads. And then I actually had the one after these two and I don't think I had purchased it. I think I had it in my brain and then I forgot. So, I don't know. But I would love it in the comments below if you would share with me what books you have currently read and what books that you would recommend me to read because I'm going to need one after this because evidently I have forgotten which other one I was going to read after these two. Okay, next it says... Um, what is your biggest regret in life? Doesn't have to be negative. Maybe something you wish you did. Um, let's see. I try not to live with regrets. But I would probably say my biggest regret is caring too much about what other people think of me. And not doing... Like when I was in school and high school, I was very shy which came across as I was snotty, but it was just that I was really shy and I was scared of people talking to me because I didn't know what they were gonna say and I didn't want people to make fun of me and all of that stuff, which came across as being kind of snotty. My husband will even tell you that. We started dating in high school and he has even told me that. I don't know why he started dating me, but I'm sure he's got some funny reason why he did, but, um. So I would just say that being more, my biggest regret is just not having the confidence to be me. Taking so long to actually be able to um, be comfortable with me. I kind of felt like for so many years I was so worried about what other people thought of me and all of that that I really didn't even try things that I really liked because I was so scared that somebody was going to notice me doing them. So that's probably my biggest regret is really, it's not, you know, I still would have chose the same college. I still would have, you know, everything that I've been through has, has, every experience that I've been through has made me who I am today. But I wish I wouldn't have been as shy and so, I guess, quiet and scared of being myself. So I guess that's, that's, probably my biggest regret is, you know, the shyness and not feeling confident enough to be me and too worried about what other people say. Um, it says, what is your favorite thing about being a YouTuber and what is my least favorite? Uh, my favorite thing would definitely be communicating with y'all and feeling like that we're building a sense of community. If you guys message me, if you, you know, write me on Instagram or even here, I try my best to write y'all back, say some kind of comments or I like that. I like sharing all of my tips and I like all of that about YouTube. I love everything. Like when I was in school, in high school, I really loved all of the computer classes and business classes that I took. Hence the reason probably why I went into um, business administration. And um, I kind of felt like I, I went to school in business administration. That was what my degree was in. And... Um, when I got out of school, I worked for St. Jude for a year and a half. And yes, this does relate to what you're asking. And then I got out because my husband was being a coach. And my son is crawling behind the couch. You're probably going to be able to see him in just a minute. And my husband was going to be a coach. And I just knew that I needed something that was going to work with his schedule more. And I wanted to be connected to the kids. And I wanted to have a schedule that was going to match the schedule of my kids once I had kids because <clears throat> I didn't have Kate until I was 27. So this was before I was even married. This was back in 2006 and I didn't get married to 2007. All right, go in there. So I went into teaching 
Well, at the beginning, I still felt like, even though I was teaching business classes, I felt like, because my emphasis is in marketing, so I felt like I was not using my degree to the best of my ability. Like, I really loved all of that, creating flyers and advertisements and I absolutely loved everything about that in college and I just was not being able to use that when I was in when I was teaching so this channel and my blog basically my brand has been able for me to use my marketing to actually get my creativity going and to share it with all of you guys so everything that I do share I absolutely love that I mean this is my passion. So everything that you see me talking about, I'm very passionate about. Um, the least favorite things would be, oh, all of the negativity. Oh. And I have it to where my comments all have to be, uh, they're moderated. So you cannot post on my channel unless I'm okay it. There are so many times when I've gotten hateful comments that I really want to publish them and I really want to choose somebody out because I feel like, especially when I can tell by they've made a comment because they've watched one little snippet of a video and they've never watched any video prior to that because usually it's something dumb and makes no sense at all what they've written. So the negative comments, every, you know, I do not understand why people say such negative things. I really don't. Sometimes if you can't say something nice, just don't say anything at all. But it is the negativity because I feel like, and I have learned that a lot of those comments, the negative hate comments that I've seen and other people have, have experienced on their channel, the person has no profile picture or they'll have some kind of stock photo that's not them at all and you can tell it's not them. So basically they're hiding behind a um, username because you can't see their picture and their name is something off the wall that there's no way that you'd be able to even recognize it. So that's probably the worst thing about the YouTube is the hate comments and how much negativity just goes around. Okay, last one for Facebook, and then we will move to um, Instagram. And I'm sorry if this is getting way long. I'm sorry. Okay, it says, do you have a bucket list? Yes, but I don't call it a bucket list. I call it a life list. And I will leave that link in my description below. I do change it. I need to go in and make some corrections to it, change it around, because some of those things have changed. I call it a life list. And it is on my blog and I do go in when I do accomplish things or do certain trips, I do mark them off. One of them I will get to mark off this year because it said um, ride a train. I've never ridden a train before. And we are taking our kids to the Polar Express in December as a family. Like we're going to do the whole thing, matching PJs and all that. And I'll get to ride a train. So I'll take pictures and I'll get to mark that off my life list. So if you're interested to see what my life list is about, just check that in the description below. And if you hear some kind of snorting, that is Armani. So I apologize. I have kind of, I can't hear it anymore because I've had him for 12 plus years. And I don't hear the snorting, but anytime somebody comes over here, and sometimes even when I have people on the phone, they're like, what is that snorting noise? And I'm like, oh, that's Armani. I'm sorry, I don't even hear it. So he is actually sitting at my feet, wanting on the couch, and I'm trying to ignore him because I don't have any room up here. It's so, really loud. Yes, it is loud, but I kind of ignore it. So, um, Kate, bring your bucket in here because we need to put some stuff in your bucket. And yeah, you do. Daddy put you a bucket in there. And then Derek's. If you'll put Derek's stuff in this bucket over here. Okay, now we're to Instagram. I've got a few comments on here and questions that I'm going to answer. Okay, it says, the first one, how did you decide on Erin Condren as your planner? Did you use a planner before? And then she's got, there's one more question. So how did I decide on an Erin Condren planner? Okay. This is getting really long. I'm sorry that this video is long, but uh, is that your call? Yes, it is mine. Okay, can you put Derek's over there and then y'all can get those put up for me? Yeah. And this is yours. Yeah. That's yours. That's my sports concert. Yeah, put that in yours. Okay, um, Erin Condren. I 
I have always been a planner girl. Even since I can remember in middle school, I had this little teal notebook. It was a, a little small five-star notebook, one of the little small ones, that I made into a planner, and it even had a little cat sticker on the front. I wish I would have saved that. But even back then, I had a planner. I made it myself. So I've always been a planner girl. Once I got out of school and once I started teaching and running a blog, this was back in 2011, I decided that I needed something a little bit more because I was a wife and I was a mom and I was running a brand and I had school activities. So I tried the Erin Condren Life Planner. And I will tell you, it took me several years. I bought the first planner and it was so complicating, you guys. I just sat there and stared at it. I think I may have wrote two things in the planner because I did not know. I was scared of it. It was so complex because up until that point, I had not used anything that complicating. So then the next year I ordered a different planner and I'm like, no, I want to try the Erin Condren again. So I did that for one or, two, one or two years. And then I think back in 2014, I said, that's enough. I had tried to follow facts. I had tried um, a traveler's notebook, and I just said Erin Condren is the one for me. So since like 2014, that has been the planner that I've used. But I will tell you that back then, she only had the vertical planner. I write really big, so once she came out with the horizontal, I tried that, and for the last two years, that is what I've been using is the horizontal planner because I'm able to write big and kind of section things out the way I need to. So that is what I have, that's my little journey. It took several different planners to finally find the one that fit me. And how did you and your husband meet? My husband and I went to school together. We were high school sweethearts. We started dating um, in February of 1998. He was a junior and I was a sophomore. And I guess you could say the rest is history. And I will tell you that uh, we did not have the best relationship in the beginning. I like to say that I was a damaged person because I, honestly, I had some daddy issues. Um, just to be honest, I had some daddy issues. I did not trust men. I didn't trust guys. I thought guys were just, they weren't, th they, they only wanted me for certain reasons and I wasn't all about that. And I would, it was hard to let somebody add a wall built up. So it was very hard to let somebody break over or jump over the wall. I would say it took us a good probably three years before I really, um, let's see. I think this is all mine. I think, look in the, look in the Oh, there is buckets in there. Okay, yeah, bring those in here. So, I will tell you, it took a good three years before I let my wall kind of crumble down and kind of felt comfortable enough with him being there. I mean, he stayed, it, it was by the grace of God that the man stayed with me because I don't know why he stayed with me because I was not really nice to him. He doesn't know why he stayed with me. He just says, God, just, I get it was God's will. And I'm so thankful that he did because he has really taught me a lot and helped me with a lot of different issues. And I'm very thankful that God decided to put him in my life. So we have been together ever since. So it is 20 years that we have been together. And then we have two kids. As, as, as a result of that. So, since he won't cut your popsicle, since he would you cut his popsicle? I had to put the laundry in. Okay. Since he has to cut Derek's popsicle. <laughs> that is one way to get things done. Stand in front of the camera and ask. Isn't that right? Okay. It says, "What do you use to do lesson planning for your class?" I have done all of my lesson plan lesson planning, and y'all, I will put this in a card above for my school organization. I usually type everything out because um, I have to turn in my lesson plans and I'm just able to email those to my principal just so she doesn't have to hold on to the paper copy that I give her. So everything, I use Microsoft Word and it has a table. And if you watch that video, it shows you I still use the same thing. Um, I also use an Erin Condren planner and I love it. Can you tell me where you buy the majority of your planner stickers, washies, decoration, etc.? Stickers, Libby and Co., washi tape, 
Simply Gilded. So I would say those are my main two. Uh, Libby & Co for stickers and Simply Gilded for washi tape. Those, I mean, everything else, you guys, I just don't. Take it in there. It's washi tape. I know, go take it in there. Everything else I've kind of, like in the beginning, I went really crazy for all the notepads and all that kind of stuff, but I've kind of just kind of narrowed it down now to the Simply Gilded Washi Tape and Libby & Co stickers, and I just kind of, I feel good with those, and that's what I use from time to time. I do love two Little Bees. I love Maria. I love her shop. It's so adorable. I will use hers, and, um... Those are basically the two that I have in my little accordion file. Um, next up, if you weren't teaching, what kind of work would you do? Oh, this is several ones. If I was not teaching, what would I do? I would want to be a um, full-time YouTuber. Yes, that, is, that was what I would really like to do. But I have to, my channel has to grow a lot more for me to get to that. So I would love to do this and share all of this with you guys full time and make it to where I get to share every single day. But a lot goes into videos and editing. I mean, it's at least a four hour process to do all of that. But I would love to do this full time. Um, also, do you ever put music on while you clean? If so, what's your favorite genre or song? Do I put music on? Sometimes I do put music on if it's Christmas time. I do. I love to put um, Christmas music on when I'm cleaning or doing anything like that. And you guys, I am one of those type of people. I like all different types of, types of music. I can go from some rap music to some country music to some pop music. And it's just whatever my brain says is right. But I will tell you that... If I am taking a bath or something like that, or if I'm in the kitchen cooking, a lot of times I will have on the resort, the Disney Resort TV that's on um, YouTube. I'll put that, that link in the description below. They have several of the, um, they have several videos that are nothing but the music that they play in the resorts, and I absolutely love it. So, um, that that's probably my favorite next is oh man i hit the wrong button okay it says don't need to do that okay do that. um do you have a favorite or least favorite thing to clean or room to clean i do not like um hand washing dishes that i hate hand washing dishes that would probably be my biggest one i don't like sec a uh, really close second will be dusting because i really don't see the point you can dust today and then tomorrow walk back and the dust is right back on the furniture. So dusting, it just it just drives me insane. Um, least favorite room to clean? I really wouldn't say I have a least favorite room. I just don't like hand washing dishes or dusting. Um, would you ever make a free printable cleaning list weekly? I don't know, because I probably I'm kind of sporadic. I don't I don't do the same things every single day. It just depends on what needs to be done. I mean, but I'm not gonna say I won't ever. My bedroom is our favorite bedroom to clean. My be my bedroom is gonna be a football bedroom. Okay. How do you deal with negative comments? Um, it's gotten a little bit easier. I will say it will never be um, completely okay. Um, one, I moderate my comments, so if it's ugly enough, I won't post it, or if it has no relevance at all, it will not get posted. But, I mean, that's the biggest thing is, I just try to tell myself is, these people have an issue with themselves, not with me. They don't know me. They only know this little snip. Usually if they've only watched a snippet. Usually if somebody that's watched a while and comments a, mile, a while says something, it's usually constructive. So I will take it to heart. Like I've had people say, that music was straight crap. And it's usually a video that I've done way back. Music is so hard to do on a video, you guys. You have no idea. Sometimes I nail it, sometimes I don't. I think I've done a better job since I've signed up to for the Epidemic Sound subscription. Before that, it was so stinking hard because there's not a whole lot of royalty-free music that you can get without paying some money. So, I would say that. Just realizing that people that post negative things don't have an issue with me, they have an issue with themselves and moderating my comments. 
What is your favorite and least favorite thing about being a teacher? I love being able to interact with students. I mean, I, I like to consider myself a pretty laid back teacher. I communicate with the kids, we laugh, we cut up. I'm not really, really strict, but I am when I have to be. But I really like to interact with the kids and feel I want them to feel like they, they're loved and they're cared about. And I want them to learn some life lessons by the time they leave my room. Um, what's the negative things? All the expectations on teachers. We are not only supposed to teach, we are also supposed to be parents and counselors and we're supposed to know every single thing that goes on. We're supposed to be able to catch bullying. We're supposed to be able to tell if somebody's eating or not. We're supposed to be able to tell if something's got, somebody's got something wrong with them. It's really, really hard. And I will tell you, since you, we're talking about this, a lot of people want to blame educators for bullying. I'm going to tell you, I'm a parent and I'm a teacher, so I can see it on both sides. I'm going to tell you that people that bully are not going to do it where a teacher can see it. They're going to do it in the gym. They're going to do it in the cafeteria. They're going to whisper it going down the hallway where not anybody else can hear it but the person that it's directed to. It is not going to be open and laid out for us, for us to see it. Now, there are going to be those cases that we can catch, but most of the time, I feel like those are, it's going to take place when we don't see it. Next question, I'm sorry that this has gotten so long, but I want to answer everybody's question because if you guys were nice enough to ask me a question, I want to answer it. Okay, what is your favorite, where is your favorite place to travel to? That would be Walt Disney World because it really is the happiest place on earth for me and the beach we love the beach we go as a family vacation every single summer this will be the third year that we're going and we absolutely love it we go to gulf shores when we go and we love it what's your dream place to go to um there's two i would love to go to new york city and i would like to go to new york city when the christmas tree is up so i can see all of the christmas decorations and all of that and then italy my husband and I would love to one day be able to go to Italy. I, I fell in love with the scenery and the place in Under the Tuscan Sun. Oh, I'm like, I really need to go there. So if you've never seen Under the Tuscan Sun, I highly recommend it. Um, what is some new content that you plan on adding to your YouTube channel? I need to... I think I've kind of pretty much got everything kind of narrowed down to what I want to add to my YouTube channel because I've, I'm doing clean with me's. Um, because I'm doing clean with me's, I'm doing more vlogs. So I want to do more vlogs for y'all. I will say that, but it's just time. And now I, I am feeling more comfortable about all that. And y'all, I'm not going to, I'm just going to, I add what y'all want to see. So if there's something you want to see me do, you just let me know and I will make sure to make that happen. So I usually go off of what y'all ask me to share. So everything that I share is stuff that y'all have asked me to share. So uh, that was what I would say. I would add anything that y'all are interested in seeing. Um, could you also do a summer day in the life with me? That was yesterday. Yesterday I did one of those and I will do a few more of those. Maybe take you from the entire day in my life, not just the afternoon. I would have done that, but I didn't think about picking up the camera until about 1030. So yes, I will do some of those. Do you and your husband share household chores? Yes, we do. And I know when I do my clean with me videos, he is not in those because you guys, it's, one of those top things that right now he's not really comfortable being in front of the camera. I'm hoping that he gets more comfortable with that. So this is kind of my thing and it's not really his. So I try not to get him in the can on the camera. But like right now I had even more laundry than I have in front of me right now. And he took some last night and did some and folded them and put them away. He helps with the kids. It's kind of like one of those things. He'll cook supper and I'll do laundry. Or he'll cook supper and I'll get the kids ready, taking their bath, their baths taken. Or he'll do supper when I'm doing my YouTube um, editing. We kind of, we just kind of, it's not, hey, he does this and I do that. We kind of just go and do what needs to be done. 
So he does things, I do things. Now he does mow the yard and all that. I don't take care of any of the yard work. I just don't do it. And honestly, he's OCD about that. He does not trust me out there mowing the lawn the way he does because he has a certain way he likes to do it and I would not be doing it that way. So yes, we do share the household chores and helping with the kids. And I will be honest with you and give him props in the mornings. He does all of the getting the kids ready in the morning. And he even fixes their lunches so I can get ready and get all the stuff ready to go and out the door. So he does help tremendously. Um, let's see. The last two questions. Um, what chores do you hate and that he hates? This is the last question that we have. What chore? Well, I think I already answered that. I don't like to dust or hand wash dishes. Um, and I really don't like folding and putting away laundry. But I have to do it. It's just one of those things that's never ending. Uh, he, um, I don't really know what chore he doesn't like. It would probably be, since it's summertime right now, would probably be mowing the yard because like the other day it rained and he looked out the window and he was like, oh my gosh, I have to mow again. I just mowed yesterday. So probably mowing right now because our lawn gets, it grows up so fast since it's summertime. So that is it. So you guys, that is all for this laundry chat. I hope you've enjoyed all of the answers I've had to the questions that you've asked. And thank you to each one of you that have asked me the questions. And I'm sorry if this video was extremely long. I just wanted to make sure that I answered all the questions. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you give it a thumbs up. And I hope you hit that little red subscribe button below and to become a part of this YouTube community. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. And until next time, bye, bye guys!